Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. This video is part five in my Building Your Radio Communications Plan series, and what we're going to talk about today is building your radio template. Now, all the radios you see before you are cross compatible. They're all UHF radios, and even though each one of them has different functions and capabilities, they all have the common denominator of being able to talk to each other on analog FM. Now this being the case is great, but you need to make sure that you have channels that you can talk to each other on there. And these are your operational channels and having those set up in advance. So even though this radio lacks a display, we know that channel 2 on this radio is the same as channel 2 on this one, which is the same as channel 2 on this one, even though they have different ways they operate. It's certainly more desirable to have the radio have the exact same control set but let's say you don't have that luxury you want to be able to have all those channels you've selected for operations to be able to flow in the same format what you don't want to be is you don't want to be the guy who has a whole cache of radios or other people show up with their radios and you don't have the same channels in your radio and this happens quite often and it doesn't just happen to individuals it happens to organizations as well and before you begin your operation if you have to take your radio equipment and break out a laptop to program radios that's no good you want to make sure that all of your stuff is set up in advance so when you pull whatever channels you have in your template for your communications plan you can go ahead and roll out that communications plan forthwith. Now the definition of template for us in this video is it's the layout of your radio's programming which is your channel layout as well as your control layout and it's important to remember that the channel and control layout should be uniform across your entire fleet. This prevents confusion amongst your users. The template should be operations focused. It should be focused on supporting the operation. It's important to consider when you're laying out your channels, you consider a wide area, a tactical, interop, calling, and a regroup talk path. You want to keep it simple. You want to build your template so the least radio savvy user will be able to utilize that radio effectively. Identify your frequency resources. And these resources, these are some of the variables that will affect that is, is your license or license class, the license class or licenses of your users, uh, your organization's licenses for their infrastructure or itinerant frequencies or whatever they're licensed for, and local, state, and federal plans that may have an impact upon your frequency resources. Now, before you decide to just use these resources willy-nilly, it's important to identify these and then monitor them. You need to monitor the channels you plan on using for a period of time to see if there's any other users of the frequencies you're planning on using and if they're regular users of it. Because if they're regular users of those channels, you're going to interfere with them and they're going to interfere with you, and that's not desirable. So you want to identify and monitor and then you're going to want to catalog, build your book, and then once you've cataloged them, then you can work on assigning these different frequency resources to different functions for your template. Equipment selection. Your equipment should be standardized or compatible. Even though these two radios here are different radios, they're still somewhat compatible. The control sets are very much the same, although this one is limited by not having a display, but you can see here that the controls being similar will make writing a template that will work across both platforms feasible. Uh, it should be a durable or proven design. Cost effective. One of these radios here you can get for about $25. One of these is generally about $100. So, I mean, they're cost effective. It's sustainability. You could build up a cache of parts. You could cannibalize other radios. So those are important considerations. And logistics concerns, such as batteries. Uh, batteries, these radios don't use the same battery pack, but the chargers are the same. But batteries are a definite logistic concern. 
chargers are a concern, your programming equipment. Your programming equipment, you're going to have different software packages for different radios, perhaps different cables, and you need to take those into account when you're buying equipment for your fleet. And also the cross compatibility of audio accessories and uh, carrying pouches, etc. The same thing goes with mobile radios as well. Okay, let's put this together here. Uh, you can see in our map here, uh, our group organization property jurisdiction is known as camp, and we're on the left. Now, our neighboring jurisdiction property camp group, whatever, is known as Jones, and they're to the right. And both of us are, have a river that runs through our respective areas, and we both are have frontage on Highway 52. We've worked well together in the past, and we've decided that we need to have some kind of a joint communications plan in order to work with each other in time of crisis or uh, just to better foster an advantageous working relationship. So both of us happen to be fortunately on UHF. So that being the case, we both have our own infrastructure in place. And our infrastructure does overlap one another, but they're not on the same frequencies. So we have the benefit of having the additional coverage already engineered into our situation. So considering that now we've worked out our own mutual aid agreement, let's see how we would make that work in a communications template sense. For the purposes of this video, we're going to construct a theoretical template for our model that we're using. And this is kind of the flowchart that I've utilized. And some of these may apply to you, some of them may not. Uh, you may have additional steps that would apply to your situation, so your mileage may vary. But first of all, identify your frequency resources and ensure cross-compatibility of all equipment you anticipate utilizing. So make sure everything will work together in a certain fashion and you end up having to govern your template to work with your lowest common denominator in equipment. So you don't want to build it around your most advanced piece of equipment that actually has greater features than the rest of your fleet has. So that's something you want to identify right off the get-go. Next is you want to address any and all licensing and coordination issues uh, depending upon your situation and what frequencies you're using and what plan you need to address all of those before you roll out a standardized template. You want to discuss usage guidelines. Uh, you want to know exactly what you're going to use each frequency for and earmark such and decide what works for you and what will not work for you. You want to discuss the use of common radio protocol terminology and tactical call signs. You want to have the same sheet of music for all your users. You want to build test templates and perform coverage testing. Before you go and you program all your radios, make sure that you take the template that you've written, write them for each piece of equipment you intend to field, and take it out and test it with whatever infrastructure or field inf infrastructure you may be utilizing, and perform your coverage testing, and do this before you program your entire fleet. And then what you want to do is, is you want to perform, program a training fleet of radios. Take a small cache of radios, Give them to your users and then have a class uh, showing them, okay, this is how we're doing this, this is how we're doing that, and make sure that your users are fully familiar with all of your equipment before you program your entire fleet. And last, program your entire fleet of radios and utilize your new template. Well, this is our theoretical joint operations template here, and I've placed it in an ICS-217 form which is a very easy tool to maintain all of this information in one document and you can use a notebook or another spreadsheet or whatever you desire but I just prefer to use these forms because they're pre-formatted and they work very well for the purpose. What we have is, is we've assigned four channels to ourselves and to Jones as primary operational channels, one of those being wide area or repeaters. And then we have uh, repeater talk arounds in the following positions. 
and then we have two additional tactical channels to assign as necessary and you can look under the eligible users what we have is is we've actually shown you that the primary user is in the front position the secondary user is separated with the forward slash in both cases here we've also assigned four additional channels around our field deployable infrastructure and this is for the purposes of if you have to establish a forward operating position outside of the range of your own infrastructure to enable you to effectively coordinate whatever operation you need to do. So this right here and its use is as deployed and you can see that we have our portable repeater and its talk around and then two additional tactical channels. Down here we have our calling channels and there, there are two distinct talk paths and they're using very generic frequencies in this example because these are probably frequencies that are possessed by users outside of our agreement here or outside of our template to be able to contact us so that being the case we have two different talk paths for that right there and then we have an interrupt channel now the interrupt channel would allow this outside group that's not included in this template to be able to operate with people that are included in this template and again it's a very generic frequency that uh, just about any piece of radio equipment would be able to support and in our last position is our regroup channel and regroup channel isn't really a distress channel the regroup channel is more of we need to bring everybody on one channel everybody go to regroup the regroup channel is not normally used as a tactical channel. It's normally held in reserve just for the event that we need a common channel to put everybody on rapidly. Now you'll note that for repeater talk rounds we have channels 2, 6, and 10. And a repeater talk around works like this. Let's talk briefly about repeater talk rounds. Uh, RF spectrum is a limited resource and in many cases you may only have one frequency pair to operate on it's similar to living in a house with uh, several siblings and you only have two toys you end up having to share so what you do is is you make the most out of what you have available to you and using the output frequency as a talk around is a good way to do that now you can see our frequency pair here our input is going to be 469.975 and the output of the repeater is 464.975 and you can see our repeater in operation between user A and user F on wide area now their separation due to geographic distance necessitates the use of the wide area repeater to maintain communication now we have a smaller group over here which is team one which is users B C D and E and they're all using the repeater talk around because they're working within close proximity to one another in like a, a neighborhood perhaps or even within you know a few hundred yards of each other on a certain project so therefore they're using a simplex channel which is the output of the repeater in a carrier squelch mode to facilitate communication within their own team now the benefit of this is is they can actually hear the traffic going over the wide area repeater so if there was any important messages for team one the team leader would be able to hear those messages and actually everybody on the team would be able to hear that traffic but they know that traffic is on the wide area repeater and not specifically directed at them now if user A decided he wanted to contact team one he would just go ahead and call team one and then Team 1's leader, or whoever the traffic was addressed to, would merely change his channel selector to the repeater and go on the repeater and carry on his transmission with user A. And then once their transmission is completed and the traffic is passed, they can go ahead and go back to their talk around channel and conduct their operation. So they're carrying out their operation without interfering with the wide area repeater and they're not utilizing that resource when it isn't necessary for their particular evolution. And depending upon the geographic size of the area you're working in, it's possible to reutilize that talk around channel 
in different areas. I mean, if you're five miles away from each other and you had two groups of people, you could certainly operate on that same talk around channel without interfering with the other user of that channel and still allowing that wide area repeater resource to be unused except for if necessary to conduct wide area communication. Well, I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.